This video is going to be about polysaccharides. So when we think about polysaccharides, we need to think about the two big families of polysaccharides. And that is going to be storage polysaccharides and structural polysaccharides. So let's start with the storage polysaccharides. So this family is going to be broken up depending on um, whether or not these polysaccharides are found in animals or in plants. So in animals, the most common storage polysaccharide is glycogen. So glycogen is going to be made of glucose. Um, these glucose molecules are going to be joined by glycosidic bonds, and those bonds specifically are going to be alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. So something else about glycogen is glycogen is a very highly branched polysaccharide. And so actually at these branch points uh, where these different branches are coming off the main chain, we have a different kind of glycosidic bond, which is going to be an alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond at those points. Um, so glycogen is going to be stored typically um, in the liver and in the muscles. And that is the uh, basic information that you're going to need to know about glycogen. Um, so now we can move on to what we find in plants. So in plants, they're going to store their glucose in the form of starch. But it gets a little more complicated than that because we have two different kinds of starch. So the first one we looked at is something called amylopectin. So amylopectin is going to be very similar to glycogen, just not as highly branched. So it's going to be made of glucose with mostly alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. It's going to be branched, but remember, not as branched as glycogen. And then since it is branched, we'll have those alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages at those branch points. Um, and so moving on from amylopectin, we'll move on to the second kind of starch that we see, which is called amylose. So amylose, again, will be made of glucose. It's going to have alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. But unlike glycogen and amylopectin, amylose is going to be a straight chain. So the purpose of storage polysaccharides is going to be to store glucose molecules that the cell or the organism can then um, release later. That way it can use them for energy and it, has, um, it kind of serves as a backup source of energy for these organisms. So now that we kind of know what the storage polysaccharides do, uh, we can look at the structural polysaccharides. So the most common structural polysaccharide is cellulose. So cellulose, again, is going to be made of glucose. But the interesting thing about cellulose is that these glucose molecules are arranged in a, in a really unique way. So every glucose molecule is going to be um, upside down in respect to its neighbor in a polymer of cellulose. So for example, if this is one glucose molecule in cellulose, its neighbor is going to be like this. And then the next one would go back up. And so they alternate like that back and forth throughout the whole molecule. So in order to make um, this unique orientation, we have to have a special kind of glycosidic bond, which is going to be a beta-1,4 glycosidic bond that you see in cellulose. So this bond is unique because uh, humans actually can't break this bond down. So unlike some other organisms like um, cows that eat a very plant-based diet, humans actually don't have the enzymes to break down this kind of linkage, so we cannot break down cellulose. And so this is going to be in plant cell walls, so where it's most important. And cellulose is actually um, the most common polysaccharide in the entire biosphere, just because of the sheer number of plants that we have uh, on the Earth. So this is a very important molecule to have an understanding of. So finally, we're going to look at chitin. So chitin is um, very similar to cellulose, so it's also going to be made of glucose, but with one small modification. So the glucose molecules in chitin are going to have um, a nitrogen-containing group on them. So for example, if this was um, chitin, say this glucose molecule would have a nitrogen 
and then some other things attached to that. And so that is one way that you can distinguish between chitin and cellulose. So this is going to be found in the cell walls of fungi, and it's also going to be found in the exoskeletons of insects. So these are the major polysaccharides that you need to know for freshman biology. So just review, you have storage and structural polysaccharides. In storage, in animals, we have glycogen. In plants, we have amylose and amylopectin. And then structural, we have cellulose in um, most plants. And then we'll have chitin in fungi and um, in exoskeletons of insects. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.